Welcome to the series of Bible studies prepared by Salvation Army women from around the world who strive to put their faith into action. The theme of these studies is transformed into God's image. We believe that anyone who puts their faith in Jesus can be transformed. My name is Rosalie Peddell, and I am from Canada. I would like to share with you the second in this series of 12 studies. Each study includes four sections to help you explore and discover more on the theme. Under the heading, Transformed in Our Heart, these are thoughts based on the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 26, and Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Our key verse is from Ezekiel 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. The word heart occurs more than 1,000 times in the Bible, which indicates its importance to Christian living. It is used not just to refer to the large muscular pumping thing in our chest that keeps blood flowing, but it has a wider and deeper meaning. The Bible tells us that the heart is the seat of our personality, emotional state, intellectual actions, and will. Your heart is who you are. It's a part of your being where passions, actions, desires, and decisions come from. The heart is the very soul or core of a person. It is the only place where God desires to live and make his home. Just as bodily health depends on a healthy physical heart, so moral health depends on a healthy spiritual heart. The Bible refers to all kinds of spiritual heart problems. There are hard hearts and trouble hearts. There are selfish, divided, boastful, unrepentant, lying, callous, doubting, lustful, and slow to believe hearts. Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 21, clearly reminds us, For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. The first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 7, tells us that God does not look at our appearance, but at our heart. When David confessed his sins in Psalm 51, he realized his greatest need, a transformed heart. Ezekiel refers to a spiritual heart transplant, which is in our key verse. We cannot do this for ourselves, but God can and God will. Our heart of stone must be changed into a heart of flesh that beats with new life and a love for God and others. The key to living a life of holiness and purity is found in embracing spiritual heart transformation. Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Matthew 22, verse 37. Everything depends on the focus of our heart. Just as the state of a person's natural life depends upon the soundness and vigor of their heart, so the state of their spiritual life depends on the good or evil condition of their heart. King Solomon summed it up in the words of wisdom that we need to embrace in Proverbs 4, verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. We need to cultivate a heart of wisdom, living with Christ at the center of every breath we breathe, every decision we make, and every step we take on this journey of life. The heart must be made new by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to guard our heart because it is our greatest treasure. 
It's the core of our being where our dreams, desires, and passions lie. It is the part of us that connects to God and others. God has graciously given us a new heart, and it is our responsibility to keep it clean and in proper condition. We need to guard our heart because it is our life source. Our heart overflows into thoughts and words and actions. If it is unhealthy, this has an impact on everything else, including our work, our family, our marriage, and our legacy. We need to guard our heart because it is under constant attack from the evil one. We have an enemy who is focused on our destruction. He opposes not only God, but also everything aligned with him, including us. The enemy uses all kinds of weapons to attack our heart. These often take the form of circumstances that lead to disappointment, hurt, discouragement, despair, or disillusionment. The flow of the wellspring of life in our heart can be stopped by lack of faith, unwillingness to forgive, materialism, pride, and evil acts of any kind. Guarding our heart involves the energizing of our life with the transforming truth of God's love and God's word. He has chosen us to know his heart, to have his heart, and to share it with others. Here are some questions for you to think about or discuss in a group. It is suggested that you pause to reflect after each question. Perhaps writing down your thoughts might be helpful. When you have considered all the questions, listen to the concluding statement, which will help you put into practice what you have heard. Question one. Do you think God is interested in the condition of your heart? What feelings does that provoke? What do you think you need to do differently? Question number two. When was the last time your heart was attacked by the evil one? And how did you respond? And question three. What are some of the ways you can embrace the guarding of your heart? During this month, make an intentional effort to guard your heart by practicing the presence of God in your daily life meditating deeply on God's word, praying specific prayers, embracing acts of kindness, and cultivating the art of forgiveness and grace. As World Secretary for Women's Ministry, I take the spiritual condition of my heart seriously, as I have the opportunity to impact and influence the world for Jesus the transformer of hearts and lives. Our next study is about being transformed in our mind. God bless you.